so let us start about the uh, load that we are discussing. So, before that, we have major deck structure members. Now, in uh, ships, um, you have uh, been exposed to what are the structural members in a ship, is not it? So, similarly, we have the structural members of these are deck, you have the major structural members in deck legs. Then you have longitudinals or these are called deck longitudinals. Wind truss, portal frame. So, these are some of the components of your deck. Then, of course, if you have deck longitudinals, then you should have deck beams. Of course, these are items for open deck. Closed deck also, there will be no wind truss, but then you should have what is called a side shell. Then, the plating, so sometimes this is also called a grating. Uh, last one is a skid beam. Now, what is a skid beam? And that two on the deck. Now, sometimes you will find in this platform, the, you say this is your deck and there is a one rig, say a rig is positioned on the deck, okay. Now, this is your main truss. Now, what happens? Another platform may come and skid another rig onto the deck. So, you may have two drilling rigs. Normally, you see this in jack up platforms. So, this is called a skid beam. Now, this is a very heavy structure where you can slide another drilling rig or you can take this drilling rig out onto another say another platform we will come say another platform comes alongside this jacket a floating platform slides another rig say semi submersible will come so this is called a skid beam so you can see offshore activity you will not find only fixed platforms so number of platform types will come into play. And there may be another fixed platform say somewhere out here. I told you some two or three platforms in a given uh, say oil oil field. So, this is called a skid beam. So, all these things have to be designed. So, in case of the module support frame you have to design these are called wind truss. The wind truss because it is exposed to wind and not the underwater truss which is exposed to waves and current. So, uh, this is the major deck structural items 
which has to be designed and after this you design what is called the tower which is also called a jacket. jacket or sometimes this is also called a tower or what else it is called. Sometimes they call this as a template. So, this uh, what are the major structural components of this? So, first one is you write is your jacket columns. So, these are called legs. So, these are normally larger in diameter than the next one which is called braces. Now, the truss that is your wind truss that you will design and also the braces, there is a systematic arrangement for doing that. Do not do it haphazardly because that will give rise to undesirable stresses. Now, braces can be vertical, it can be horizontal and it also can be diagonal. Now, next is joints. So, these are intersection of legs and braces. Now, this has to be done very carefully because most of the structural failure occurs at joints, launch runners. or these are also called launch trusses. Then you have skirt pile sleeves. Then you have appurtenances. Appurtenances are similar to your the auxiliary fittings on the hull of a ship like your rudder then your bilge keel like that. these are called appurtenances. Now, appurtenances are boat landings. Then you have barge bumpers, conductor bracings, and other similar items. So, these are called appurtenances. Now, your main pies, it is a these are, this is called main pile housing. Your main pipes are driven through the jacket legs and columns or and then the main pipes are fixed to the tower or the jacket on and top of it the deck comes. So, these are actually the main pipes or the large diameter pipes and these are the smaller pipes. So, you may find that the main corner pipes or column pipes are not sufficient to hold down the structure on the seabed. Then you have to drive 
smaller piles along on the periphery of the columns. So, these are called skirt piles. So, a large number of piles are driven to the seabed. Now, here, so these are the main, the other is called the last one you can say this is a, there is a mud mat. Now, if you do not have the mud mat, the whole jacket can go and below the seabed because the mud mat actually gives the area for your to spread out the vertical load. So, the mud mat is an essential component of the tower or template. So, these are the main uh, components of jacket template. Now, after this you will have what is the foundation. So, what is your jacket structure? What is the type of foundation? Foundation is your, this is called a pile foundation. Now, in civil engineering, they also call this as a deep foundation as opposed to another type of foundation which you will come across in gravity platforms. Those are called well foundations or shallow foundations. Now, pile foundations, we, when I will talk about foundation, you will come across this. So, there are two types of pile. One is called a long pile and the other is a short pile. A short pile actually uh, rotates, but this type of foundation do not rotate about themselves. So, these are called deep foundations. So, here these are driven to the seabed. Now, what is, what are the function of these piles? These huge piles of the main column piles diameter can be more than 1, one meter. Uh, so, 500 millimeters to 1 meter is the pile size. So, what they are doing? Uh, pile thickness will be say can be as large as say 25 millimeters pile thickness. So, what is the function of the pile foundation? These main function is transfer load. Transfer load from this is coming from where? From jacket to soil. So, that is the main function of pile. Now, uh, the piles are connected to your jacket. Now, if you do not do this, then there will be lot of vibratory loads coming onto the jacket. Now, this is done by mechanical pile sleeve connectors. or you can grout that is you do some concrete grouting or you can weld to jacket legs. Now, in ships marine structures the golden rule is do not keep any items loose whether it can be cargo or any structural item. The loose items are always dangerous because they can go outside the ship, fall outside or they can bang against some other structure. So,
so that is one of the that is why you go for grounding grouting and welding however that will give rise to all vibratory loads from waves now uh, the coming to the uh, piles pile foundations piles you will find they are grossly dependent on soil type now if it is a very hard type of soil a hard bottom the rocky bottoms you cannot drive piles where your pile is going to twist so the enormous force from pile driver so then you have to go for a gravity type of structure or gravity platform so gravity platforms we are not discussing at present as we are discussing pile foundation but so this is grossly dependent on soil types and the other type problems that are going to come is drilling pile driving so the, because these are large diameter pipes you require a lot of effort in pile driving so piles the long long piles that is the main piles you can drive from the deck of the platform by means of pile hammers and pile drivers but what about the shorter piles there is a skirt piles so main piles from top driven from top skirt piles driven under water so remember this is a very costly operation any under water operation you do is fraught with danger first of all you have to be very cautious about the installation and positioning of the pile pile driver because as soon as you immerse anything in water you are going to be acted upon by buoyancy and movement from buoyancy so that situation will come so underwater this underwater pile driving is another important aspect the uh, next is the load variety so load variety i have already talked about but if you want to have this in detail say this is your jacket platform say first thing that is will come on the deck now deck will have say this is your module support frame and this is your rig so you may have this kind of load so this is called vibratory load then you have wind so windage area is another crucial uh, area now you can have a structure like this and then you have the tower so this is your underwater truss Cover. Now there are two things which will come. Say this is your wave. So from here you will get wave. Current you will get. Now sometimes here you will get barge impact. so you have to do extra strengthening at the water line because of this 
barge impact waves will also come here then you may have erection load then you can have installation loads so weight is going to come down from here now what else is going to act buoyancy now your structure is below the seabed so here you will find seismic coming from earthquake mudslides so these are the load the different types of loads are normally act, act on the jacket platform so these are the classes of loads and uh, from this you can have an idea of functional loads And then you have deck equipment loads this i have already talked about there is the equipments which are placed on the deck and the other is the self weight of the deck now next is the other type is environmental loads so environmental you come from mid ocean so wind waves and current so ocean engineer has to be thorough about this this is called mid ocean ice we are not getting you can get in the arctic seismic so because this is a fixed structure you will get earthquake loads so deformations caused by earthquake now these are called in structural dynamics these are called ground motions or ground displacements and accelerations so the structure if it is in located in a seismically active zone then the foundation has to take care of this not only the foundations but you have to give a thought of these joints so that means the structure is going to twist about all these joints so normally earthquake design they make the foundation as a spring mark system so this is your foundation you place it on normally the damping is not the number of So this is your base this is one thing you have to do the other thing is this joints but joints <coughs> you don't have much leeway where well, most of these joints are welded anyway now in buildings actually joints 
they make it such that they can have some kind of a rotation. In earthquake prone areas, they make this type of joints, but here actually normally uh, that is not done because the joints are fixed because of the large amount of force is coming from waves. So, if you make this as a rotation, then your whole structure is going to sway like this. So, that thing you cannot have here. And the other problem is here. Now, here what is done is actually the mud mat. The mud mat you make it extra strong and thick. You make a suitable base. This is a more earthquake prone area. You try to distribute on mud mat, so that this mud mat will have a, this is your seabed and this is your mud mat. So, you modify your mud mat accordingly, you make it more heavy, strong or increase in dimension, other things you cannot do. So, these are and immediately if there is an earthquake, there is a breakage of your column. Because this will come because of what? This because of flexural failure. So, that means you have to design the structure in such a way that it will take large amount of bending moment. The maximum failure will occur because of two things in case of this fixed structure. One is the flexure, other is what? Other is because of buckling. So, failure normally occurs because of flexure, buckling and also because of uh, this fatigue, the normal cause of a failure in jacket platforms. A failure normally occurs at these joints. So, those are to be prevented. Anyway, so this is some of the areas. The other is your uh, foundation that we are discussing. No? The other is uh, what is called seismic, we have done seabed settlements. So, how you counter this? So, I am the, your structure is not a floating structure. So, it is neither a ship or a semi submersible or a TLP. So, it is connected to the seabed, seabed settlements. So, the seabed is not stable, they are unstable. The ground on which you are standing or sitting is unstable, then what you are going to do? Seabed settlements movements. So, here seabed set to motion. By what? by currents. So, at the foundation of the platform, you may not find waves. The waves are normally you will find at the sea level, that is at the surface. A large amount of seabed is going to be swept away by currents. So, normally this will occur in soft soils soft soils are very likely to be eroded. Erosion is pretty high in this type of soil. Now, currents mudslides. Mudslides is also very dangerous. Mudslides are normally caused by earthquakes in different location or it may be caused by drilling from another platform. So, mudslide is going to have these are soil erosion. So, 
because sometimes these are called foundation erosion. because of scouring. Scouring is going to take place, scouring is just disturbing the seabed around your foundation. So, at the foundation you will find a nice hole has come where you have driven the columns. So, then what you are going to do? So, that means design pile depth, pile depth or pile length, length of pile with scour depth into consideration. Because this is one thing you can do. So, the pile actually the depth or the length of the pile that you are going to design, the main thing that you are going to do is to resist the horizontal wave load that is coming onto the pile. Now, when you design the length of the pile which is going below the seabed, your seabed actually is not going to be like this. So, in case of scouring it will come like this. So, this is your seabed. So, that this much extra length of pile you have to give. So, this is called scour depth. So, normally you increase the uh, length of pile. The other thing that you can do is what? you pour concrete, you try to grout this portion concrete or pour some, put some rocks and concrete, you make a foundation like this. So, this is called grouting. So, this comes under geotechnical. Geotechnical engineering you have to do. So, these are some of the prevention measures you have to take when you do for foundation engineering. So, modulate is your conductors and next. Scour depth into consideration add or you can go just I am just writing grouting. The other things you leave it to your structural engineer. Construction loads. So, mainly it comes from erection. Then you have transportation loads. So, here you design tie downs. Installation loads.
it's your hookup method or you, it's better you write hookup hookup on platform trust or float over so loads that are coming on to the trust from installation of deck pile installation <coughs> vibratory from pile drivers so your the main jacket has to take this load vibratory from pile drivers pile hammers so those are called installation loads operating loads driving drilling is your major operation then you have accidental loads see there are so many load categories which will come you segregate between which are static and dynamic so this is coming mainly from equipment failures human error vessel impact from barges construction equipments there are a lot of construction activities is taking place so you may have this sort of impact loads there is some then you have dropped objects equipment skidded on deck modules dropped during construction or rather you write during installation the deck module can be can weigh a few hundred tons so these are all dropped objects now last category is fires and explosions now this might also occur so these are caused by pipe bursts blowouts so how you control blowout so in the news you have found out that disaster in the gulf of mexico so blowout is another cause for the fire an explosion but you cannot it's not going to have much help because in case of when a blowout occurs 
the whole platform is going to be engulfed by fire. So, anyway, so these you can control only small explosions, large explosions are beyond your control. The other is your extreme loads. Now, extreme loads, how are you going to tackle? Say, a tsunami or a freak wave has come. So, here you have to find out amplitude, return period. of extreme waves. Storms, wind, you find this out from past history, whether at that particular environment site, is there any chance of this happening. So, in ocean engineering, the extreme load calculation is also very important. Now, after this, all this thing has been, the load has been categorized and carefully analyzed, then what do you do? Then you go for a detailed structural design. So, by this time your the load history is complete. Okay. Now, how do you start? You start from you analyze uh, this is similar to your ships from similar structure. already designed. So, this is your basic design actually. In what? In similar environmental conditions. So, this is very important because your jacket structure is going to be fixed, unlike ships, which are you just simply design, you have a basic ship having so much of length, their breadth, depth, draft and from that you select your design ship. But here actually, this is very important, you try to find out a similar structure and you study similar environmental conditions. So, here you will find out uh, this you can find out from your archive or design archive where you have find out the, normally the big offshore companies they will have, must have done worldwide uh, contracting. So, they will be having all this data. So, this you have to build up on past data. Uh, data is required, environmental data and past data of environment and structures. So, you build upon this, this is the first, first job you do, next job experience.
So, a new entrant into this field will be for him it will be difficult, but say offshore contractor or offshore companies which have wide experience, they can draw upon their experience to decide on structural design is structure size. say McDermott or Exxon, they, they have built so many offshore structures, they will, can immediately tell you where, for a new field what type of structure you are going to design. So, that means data of and knowledge from experience. This is your similar environmental conditions, similar structures. So, this is your basic structure. After this, what do you do? you make a detailed analysis. So, these are mainly from experience and past data, but with that from that you do not stop. So, detailed analysis you make your static dynamic responses, static and dynamic analysis has to be done. So, this you have studied in structural engineering, not only this is done based on FEM, FEM, CFD, all these mathematical tools are normally employed here. you calculate structure response. Find <coughs> stresses and strains. Stresses, <coughs> deflections, etcetera. compare with regulatory bodies. So, that means, in case of offshore structure design, <coughs> you have to do a lot of fundamental analysis. So, this is your fundamental analysis, you cannot escape this. And when you put this to your surveyor for your approval, so here you will find ABS, DNV, LRS, they will come and inspect all your drawings or put their seal on the drawings that you produce here. You know, they will ask for this all these calculations or the method of calculating your uh, structural members from your fundamental analysis. Where do you explain whatever software you use for your FEM, CFD, etcetera. So, now there are a lot of softwares for your um, FEM of your underwater truss, foundation analysis will have different software. So, all these things are done and then you have to corroborate with the surveyor. So, this is the what is called after you do this. So, this is called basis of design or in short this is called BOD. basis of design. Now, after this uh, uh, all these things have been done and uh, next class I will tell you about there is a small problem where you have to select the pile size or rather next class we will try to do about selection of member sizes.
So these are main job from structural design. Now in ships, I think uh, in your previous semester you have done what is the ship strength calculation. From that what, what you have calculated? That is the plate thickness, that is the longitudinal size of longitudinal size of centre girder and all that. Similarly here you have to find out member sizes. But here in the analysis of jacket structures, Unlike this is different from your that ship strength or hull girder strength calculations. You cannot do it that type of thing out here because the structure is vertical. It is not resting on two wave crests, a long structure, box girder. So here you have to do a lot of fundamental analysis. So selection of member sizes are done from your APM calculations. So if you want to go in offshore, you have to be strong in the FEM and CFD fields. But you, of course, you start from a basic design. And not only basic design is important, but you have to draw upon your past experience. Experience is also very important because in the Norwegian fields, a lot of failures have happened because the offshore contractor did not have sufficient experience for that type of field operation. So that is very crucial. So anyway, next before we do this and before we go to foundation analysis.